Hello students, welcome to HSC Chemistry and the Module 7 Organic Chemistry module. This is video number 10 and we're going to be looking at molecular shapes. In actual fact, we're going to just be revisiting these a little bit. So hopefully the shapes that you see that we talk about in this video are, are familiar to you, or at least you can, they will jog some memory back from your year 11 course. We're going to be looking at the shapes of molecules for single, double and triple bonds, uh, and just see if we can see what's actually happening around that central carbon for each of these different types of important compounds. So there's three important shapes that we need to be aware of, and probably the simplest way for us to look at this is to um, start with the simplest of all. So this one is methane. Now, what we're looking at when we're talking about the shapes of the hydrocarbons is we're actually talking about the shape of um, uh, atoms. So therefore, if you like, the distribution of electrons around the central carbon atom. Now, that's that's easier to understand for methane because we can see the central carbon atom right here and we can see that there are four um, hydrogens sitting around and these four hydrogens need to be equal in terms of strength. Now there's a, a, a smaller side I guess we need to have a little bit of a look at here. I don't know to what extent a concept which is known as hybridization is going to be for you. However, I do know that there's potentially going to be a couple of additional things you might need to know. So let's just have a quick look for the moment at our carbon atom. Now, when we look at carbon, we know that we have four valence electrons. Now, these four valence electrons are actually in the 2s2 and 2p2 um, subshells or suborbitals. We also know that the um, p2s, the, the two uh, P electrons are going to be at a higher energy level than the two S's. And yet in our molecule, they're all the same strength. The amount of energy that's required to uh, extract one of these bonds is no different for any of these hydrogens. So how does that happen? Well, what happens is that if we look at the fact that we have um, our two S and then our two uh, P, in order to equalize them, what will happen is first of, all, first of all, one of these electrons will join the P's. So this is the 2S and this is the 2P. And as a result of that, we will have 1S and 3P electrons. What happens to these is a process called hybridization. Okay, and a hybrid is a combination of two things sort of together. So these four electrons now, the one from the S and then the three from the P's, all hybridize to become four equal bonding sites, if you like. So four places where this can occur. What happens then is we have single bonds between a carbon and a carbon or a carbon and a hydrogen. And these types of bonds are called sigma bonds, the Greek letter. Again, I'm not sure how much of this you will need to know, and I haven't gone into a lot of detail at this point, and if I think that we need a, bit, uh, a separate video on hybridization, then I might um, put one of those together, because the process is quite complex, and hopefully you'll explore it a little bit in class, just to help you understand it a little bit more. So the orbital notation for our, um, for our tetrahedral molecule here, uh, is sp3 and then the overlapping orbitals that create the sigmas is between an sp3 and another uh, sp3 or if it's a hydrogen it's just an sp3 and an s which is where the single lone electron from the hydrogen is bonding in here we get some overlap between these orbital regions in order for these bonds to form when we look at uh, in fact what we might do is quickly look at ethane. Now the thing with ethane is when we're looking at the shapes of molecules, you've got to pick a carbon and then determine what's happening to it. So, so let me pick this carbon here. 
So when I pick this carbon here, this time I have three hydrogens and I have one carbon that's bonded to this particular carbon that I've chosen. Now the thing about this is there's still four bonds, there's still arranged in a tetrahedral arrangement. It's not as easy to see, but it's reasonably close to see that it's the same as my methane. And in fact, for all of the alkanes, the carbons are going to be the same because I could have just as easily picked this one. And again, I have my tetrahedral arrangement. So four atoms bonded in a tetrahedral structure around my selected carbon atom. But what happens when we change functional groups? When we change functional groups, such as my ethene, where I have a double bond now here between the two carbons, in this situation, the shape has changed. So very clearly, straight away, we see a difference in the shape. So again, if I concentrate on one of the carbons, so let me just pick one carbon, this carbon here. Now I have one, two, three, three bonding sites. And these three bonding sites are forming a different structure to what I had before. In actual fact, they're sitting in what looks like a triangle. If I draw straight lines between all three of these, two things I'll notice. One is that the, tri that the three of them are connected in a triangle, and that gives us the phrase trigonal. But then the other thing is that if you look at it kind of flat on, which is, which is hard to do with these model kits, but you can see that those three atoms are also in the same plane as my central atom, as the one that I was looking at initially. So this carbon atom is sitting in the same plane. If we had like a, an atomic knife and took a slice, we would hit all of them. Um, so they're all in the same plane. And that means that the shape of this particular distribution of electrons around that central carbon is a trigonal planar. So that's the shape. The way that it's formed is slightly different. Now with the three bonds, we have one S and two P. So we've got three bond regions around our central carbon. So the easiest way to think about that is as an SP2. That's two P and one S, so three all together. But then the double bond has a different kind of um, overlap in the orbitals. And that's where our pi bond comes in. So we've still got a, our sigma bonds created the same way as we looked at earlier. But now we have uh, one of these P's is sort of sitting separate from the other two and at a higher energy level. And this is one of the reasons why these particular uh, compounds are more reactive than their corresponding alkane. So ethene is more reactive chemically than ethane. The final one we need to have a look at is the linear one. So now we've drawn a third pair of electrons in so that we have three bonds around our central carbon and six electrons in this region. So this is very electron dense and electrons don't like hanging around with each other all the time. So this is even more reactive than our uh, alkene. There are now only two bonding sites, uh, two bonding regions if you like. So where we pick again one of these carbons as the central carbon, we have a carbon on one side of it and a hydrogen on the other side of it. Those two atoms are in a straight line with our central carbon. And as I said, it doesn't matter which one we pick, it's exactly the same from either end. And so you can see here, when we have a triple bond, we actually have a linear shape so that those three atoms are all in a straight line. So now we have something which is linear, but we also only have two bonding regions, whereas before we had three and four. So with ethene, we only have two regions where the electrons are found. So now we have an SP, so that is one S and one P, uh, forming the hybrid and forming the equal strength of bond, and that's where the sigma bonds are. And now we have two of these pi bonds, which are the higher energy ones, and they're in that region where the triple bond is, and that creates a great chemical instability. So these are very reactive, these particular chemicals. Part of our understanding of molecular shape is that we're able to 
explain some of the properties that we see on the basis of the structure, which includes the shape, and the bonding that occurs not only within the molecule, but between molecules. And we're going to be looking at these in subsequent videos. Thanks for watching.